So today we are going to go over our list, our top five list of 4K Blu-rays. It doesn't necessarily have to be Blu-rays. You can probably stream it, or if you have a Cloud Escape, you can do that yeah. there as well. This is going to be our, our top five 4K uh, review discs, samples, content that we use to to evaluate equipment. So such as like TV screens or speakers. So Atmos DTSX content and what we think looks excellent as far as like video quality is concerned. So Enzo, we're going to kick it yeah. off with you at your number five. Let's go from five down to one. So oh, your least okay. favorite to your most favorite. Uh, surprisingly, this was very difficult. <laughs> it's just, it, it, there's so much to choose from. Um, but look, uh, Aquaman for me is a big one. Um, I use Aquaman a lot. Um, it is very good. Some people say number five, really? It should have been number two or three or one. Or um, I, I like Aquaman. Um, you know, at the end of the day, very good for high dynamic range. As everyone's well aware, Aquaman is very vivid, very bright. Um, there's some ridiculously very good scenes in that. Um, and, you know, even with the, you know, the non-CGI scenes, because everyone obviously goes CGI is always an issue, um, but this CGI looks, you know, kudos to them for the effort. Um, but um, it, it looks great. The, the mix is fantastic on it. Uh, you know, we use it um, uh, surprisingly quite a bit, um, especially with the... Um, there's a scene where they're in Sicily where the camera pans. It's obviously IMAX in that ratio and the camera pans towards the island and, and surprisingly the music mix in that. So the actual um, musical track is very good as well. Um, so Aquaman is definitely one that we use a lot, um, you know, and, and I think probably, what was the other scene? The trenches, you know, when they obviously um, go to the ocean, they've got to swim down. Ironically, quite dark and everyone tends to go, really, you'd use that, but that shows a lot of detail, even though there's a lot of CGI monsters um the the aquaman trench scene is actually very good um you know it's probably one of my favorites to be fair um a so lot of blacks a lot of blacks too a lot of blacks yeah. a lot of blacks the jvcs love uh that scene mm -hmm. to be very good because they've got some of the best blacks um we run a barco uh, obviously not for everyone it's a bit expensive but um the blacks are just you know phenomenal um it's a very good disc um and, and very well mixed maybe one of my favorite DC um, mixes along with the other one we're going to talk about. Um, but yeah, no, number five, definitely Aquaman. And you're number four. <laughs> right. So number four, the other DC movie, ironically, not, I mean, I'm a big comic buff and love my, my comics, but uh, Batman vs Superman um, is very good. I, I think picture quality wise, soundtrack wise, um, we use a, a lot, um, you know, especially in particular scenes, the scene where um, Batman uses the sound blasters to um, knock him out a bit, um, the bass in that, um, the rain is great, the picture quality is great. Um, and the fact that I think you've touched on this, Shane, with some of these when you review them, you know, a lot of the films are shot 35 mil, then they up-convert or they're scanned. Yeah. Um, this this presents really well. I mean, I think um, you quite liked Batman Superman as well, from yeah. memory. Yes, I did. Um, so I, I, even the director's cut, um, which for those that didn't like the original movie, watch the director's cut. It does fill a lot of holes, um, but it just presents really well and it was up mixed really well. And the Atmos is, you know, the, the track on it is really good. So mm -hmm. that would definitely be my number four, um, especially the scenes. Actually, the HDR in that with the when there's fire, um, the colours pop and the little kryptonite um, blade, the greens on that, um, really good. Uh, we tend to use that a lot. Um, what well, I do anyway. Um, Andrew, my business partner, is not here today. He's got his own five. We'll probably get him in one day. But uh, the, I, I really like uh, Batman, Superman. You wouldn't um, think that the uh, you don't think that the graininess of it hinders the image quality no, at all, or you don't mind that? Look, I, I'm uh, grain. Uh, I knew this was probably going to come up. Uh, I, I'm a, an ambassador for grain. I, look, cinema for me, and we spoke about this the last video we did, uh, you know, is very cinematic. Grain is cinematic, and there's a lot of grain haters, but at the same time, there's a lot of grain lovers. And I think it adds that sense of uh, character to the film. I tend to find sometimes we get so good with the picture quality and so sharp that like Gemini, for instance, with Will Smith, looks like a, a rom-com, you know, it looks like a sitcom. You know, it's very, very um, 
camcorder-ish like recording and to me that feels artificial um, and it disjoints the emotion away from from it uh, whereas with grain i like grain i think it adds character not too much of it i think you know um sometimes they go a bit overboard it looks just like noise eventually um but no i, I think the grain adds that character to the film i must admit i believe that this 4K version is a little bit less grainier than the than the Blu-ray from from what I've read. Um, I've never actually tested the Blu-ray itself, but I, yeah. I, look, I, I'm, I like grain. I think um, you know. Um, I, I still think you know. With everyone's trying to chase this end game of better picture, better picture, but it gets to the point where it just doesn't look right, you know. And I like that cinematic feel. It's all part of that experience. So no, I, I think the grain adds um, character. It's the same way they chose in. Um, what was that one that you did the review, the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, where it looks like yeah. a comic strip? Yeah. Right. People were going, my 3D glasses aren't working in the cinema. They were like, no, that's yeah. just how it's meant to be, you know. I think it just adds that depth. So, no, I, I definitely dig the grain. Yeah, I don't mind it at all. I mean, no. <laughs> weird misconception. I get so much hate because people always say, Shane hates grain. He hates grain. I'm like, dude, when do I ever? I gave Batman v Super like a nine something. I gave you like three hundred and nine point nine or something like that. Like, and, and, and three hundred is three hundred is the grainiest movie. Yeah, like super grainy. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's super grainy. And and but it adds that character. You know, yeah. there's a reason the directors do this. They're the pros. It's the way they intend you to experience the film. And, and, and you know, at the end of the day. I, I think it adds character. And Zack Snyder is an absolute legend and he should run for president. And yeah. I think he's fantastic. So all the haters can, yeah, change, <laughs> switch off if you like. Um, my, my next one is a, is a Jewel 3, and there's a reason why. Uh, Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049. I, I couldn't separate these. I had to mention both. Um, uh, I mean, 2049 is... Uh, it, 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 that that movie in general is just a masterpiece. It's a piece of art, and if you could frame the whole thing and put it on the wall, you probably would. Um, you know, it's a great movie. I know we're not here to talk about movies as such, but um, the scenes in it again um, really immerse you. Um, there's some fantastic scenes in it. All the you know, all the neon drenched signs and the cityscapes and and, and that Atmos track on it is just engaging. Um, it's uh, uh, very, very, uh, if a movie is designed to give you anxiety like Christopher Nolan does in his films, um, it, 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 you know, it hits the beat. It's the one track that we use to really test the subs, as Shane, you've mentioned before, that, you know, that yeah. the sub track on uh, 2049. And the remastering of the original Blade Runner is one that um, I tend to always use both, um, especially if a lot of our fans that, or well, people that we build cinemas for love the genre. Um, the final cut of the original was was that was awesome, was superb. The transfer was great, and again, you know, I think you've touched on this. The older films have always, you know, the the way that they're recorded on film, they transfer great to four K. You know, it's just the joy of it. Um, but look, Blade Runner for me, the Dolby Atmos track, um, the way that it really, I mean, obviously, sound complements picture, and the way that it immerses you. Um, the opening chapter with the, the floating car that just comes across the um, the screen. Um, and, you know, again, you're only as good as the system you've got. And if the system's been calibrated and if the subs are in the right spot, then you really feel and experience that, um, that movie. Um, there's a difference between hearing it and feeling it. I think that was a famous quote from White Man Can't Jump, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. When uh, Woody says to Wesley says to Woody, you can hear Jimmy, but you can't feel Jimmy. Um, you know, and, and that's the same thing. There's, you know, this movie has great bass, but I've heard this movie sound on people's systems where the subs are just haven't been tuned. They've just been turned up, and it just sounds like one big fart, essentially. So it can sound bad, but if it's done well, this Blade Runner disc is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. How do you? How, how would you take it when people say that twenty forty nine is not real HDR because it doesn't go past like four hundred nits? Um, do you think well, it has I, to hit a thousand nits to be HDR? Well, it's ir irrelevant because most people aren't even hitting that on their projectors. I mean, most people ever buy a projector and they want I want the biggest screen ever. We touched on this last time, and, and they're nowhere near HDR anyway. Um, no, I, I don't. It's still a, it's still a great. Um, disc. I mean, even if it was um, uh, just the the Blu-ray version. I mean, no, I, I honestly don't think that that's relevant. Um, 
we're not here to tick boxes and it's very hard to hit HDR in cinema, mm -hmm. you know, unless you've got a projector that's 5,000 lumens and you've got the right screen size, but on every Tom, Dick and Harry's projector, that's 1800 lumens. They've all got 130 to 150 inch screen. No one's hitting HDR there. Um, so maybe the, maybe the people that are really fanatic, um, I can understand, you know, they probably have a 110 inch, because they want to hit HDR, um, you know, I, I don't feel that it's that important. What's your take on it? I feel that if it's got a wide color gamut, that you're getting a nice wide spectrum of color, yep. and yep. that you're not getting banning, anything like that, and that there is a good contrast between the light and the dark parts of the screen, of the image, mm -hmm. good separation. I think that's uh, yep. more than enough, whether it's on a yeah. projector or a television set. Yeah, and I and I think in Blade, I mean um, that scene where he goes to s find that the child and there's all those children working, slaving away. Um, there's a lot of separation, or well, the colours are very good. There's the contrast. There's the um, the you know the greys and the the blacks and the detail. Uh, it, it is a very detailed movie, and if, yeah. again, if it's calibrated right, there's a lot of things that you've never noticed before um, that come up um in that film you know and even um his ai girlfriend with the f um, neon jacket mm -hmm. uh you know that is uh there's some serious color in that um but you're right you know with the with the whites and the blacks if we're ticking those boxes does it really matter you know personally yeah, yeah people like to uh complain about the nits the numbers yeah, look, I think there are some people out there, especially people that watch a lot of YouTube channels. There are a lot of people out there that test these movies on TVs and put up yeah. the information on their Oppo or on their Panasonic, and it's got look how many nits in the yeah. you know in that corner. Yeah, I mean, let's just enjoy the films. Uh, as much as we try and hit reference and we try and hit um, you know certification, it is very hard to do exact HDR and, and hit the nit levels um hundred percent so um no i don't think it's relevant uh number two uh a bit controversial some people go who should be number one uh would probably be ready player one um mm. Re ready player one is a movie that ironically some people that are in this industry don't really like it uh to use it they feel that this, it's a little bit too cgi um but again, I think a movie is about picture and audio. They both complement each other, and without each other, leaves you a little bit null and you know um, mm -hmm. a bit numb. Um, but I, I tend to find obviously the opening scene in Ready Player One with the, the car race um, on our system and using the Trinov, which I know not everyone has. Uh, you, you know, you really see uh, the up mixing on this is very impressive. Um, the detail in the coins, you know, when he uses the DeLorean to uh, and it's got a bloody DeLorean in it. I mean, any movie that's got a DeLorean in it should be number two or one. Um, but the detail in that in that scene uh, and the colours, um, you know, we were using a, a Mad VR, um, doing a before and after. There's a video that we're going to shoot on this, um, talking about HDR and, and what it does to Ready Player One. You know, that, that scene where he's in the DeLorean and it's all lit up and all the colours and everything, you know, there's some fantastic detail in this film. Um, and the same thing, you know, when he's not in the game, you know, it still looks very good. A little bit grainy um, in certain parts, um, some parts more than others, which is something that threw me off when we watched it at the cinema. Um, but I, I think it's a great movie. I, we use it for uh, demoing probably the most, um, apart from number one. Um, but, um, I, you know, again, it's got everything, it ticks all the boxes, um it's got some fantastic action scenes it's got um uh different awesome color um the detail in the sound the bass you know when the boulder hits the ground and then there's the dinosaur and then kong kong is king kong is phenomenal in that uh you know you see kong moving across the screen and he actually you close your eyes and you can actually feel the bass traveling if it's set up properly obviously um, so yeah, definitely Ready Player One is my number two. That's for sure. All right, da, 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 da. number one. What do you got? <sighs> number one. This will be. This is personal. Uh, it is what got me into this uh, hobby, crazy hobby of ours. Uh, it's what elevated cinema for me. It's where it all started, and that was uh, the remaster of The Matrix. 
I, I, I use the matrix pretty much uh, all, the, all the time. Yep. I know you're going to go, what? Matrix? <laughs> number one, matrix. Uh, I know number two and three probably looked a little bit better, um, but this is the best the film's ever looked. Um, the soundtrack on it is phenomenal. Uh, the rain we use in it quite a bit to test Atmos. Uh, the um, Obviously, the, the lobby scene, um, the helicopter scene at the top, uh, the the up mix and the uh, the remix of this film has uh, brought this film back to life again. Uh, they fixed uh, the Matrix uh, when it was out on Blu-ray and I think DVD. It was quite blue; it had like a blue filter over it. Uh, whereas obviously, when you're in the Matrix, it's meant to be more green. Whereas when you're out of the Matrix, it was meant to be more blue. And I was never very content with that the look of that film when it was on Blu-ray. Um, but I think the the Matrix for me is one I use the most, um, probably because it's a bit more personal. It means more to me, uh, and but it ticks all the boxes I need. Um, and when we finish a cinema uh, and we build one, I always put the Matrix on um, from start to finish, essentially. Uh, and uh, you know, once that movie's finished, um, everyone's smiling. Uh, and um, you know, um, there's there's obviously a lot of movies that we could be here forever. Um, you know, if you really want to um, be here all day. But, you know, there's things like, um, uh, you know, we used to use Mad Max Fury Road a lot. And, you know, I kind of got sick of using the same demo track. I think that kind of ever since Atmos started was the one that everyone used all the time. Um, but for me, number one, definitely Matrix. Um, there's no two, two that's about that. Interesting I knew, I, number I knew, one. I knew, I knew you were going to not like that. <laughs> Very interesting number one. <laughs> well, look, it's a grainy, it's a grainy film, but it's not. You know, it's the best. I mean, you have to say it's the best. It's that film's ever looked. I may have to revisit it because I haven't watched it on the Trinovia. I think I saw it. I watched it on the Emotivo. So, so kicking off at number five on 4K Blu-ray or on Kaleidoscape. Shout out to Kaleidoscape owners. Number five is Fury on 4K. I yep. rock out with this movie all the time. Not only is it grainy, but it looks awesome. Great colors, very earthy tones in it. Uh, great highlights, great shadow detail, great explosions, peak highlights. Uh, of course, the Atmos. I use this use this title all the time for subwoofers just because it has yeah, well. such an aggressive, uh, punchy bass. Bang, bang, yeah. bass, you know? The gut punches. Every time when the they, tanks when fire. The, when the tanks are hiding in the bushes yeah. and fire off. Yeah, we, we use that a lot for sub-testing. Yeah, yeah. I and agree the, with the that. machine guns. Uh, so that is my number five. Yeah, interesting. It could be up a little higher, but it's number five, though. Number four, also another very popular choice. I This is another movie that I, I would have to re review because when I first did it, it was back in like 2016. There was an, not an Atmos version available for me, plus I didn't have the Cloud Escape. But yeah. number four is Edge of Tomorrow. Rock, oh, this, rock this. Have you watched it lately? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, about a few months ago on the Trinov, yeah. uh, you'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, a lot of overhead. Sure. If you watch the Atmos viewer, there's yeah. a lot of overhead effects, like a lot of movement, yeah. not just like static movement, but yeah. actual the yellow balls bounce around. There's a lot of stuff. With yeah. the helicopters flying over during that first war scene. Yep. Or actually during any war scene, actually. And then, uh, of course, the intro... It's the 10 yep. hertz 10 hertz square sine waves there at the beginning which mm -hmm. will destroy many subs like i said i think <laughs> i've said many times before i've blew i've blown up uh like a first generation svs subwoofer when i saw that movie um actually no that was world of the worlds never mind i take that back another tom cruise movie though but yeah you, you could destroy uh several subs you guys will learn sure. i'm a i'm a huge tom cruise fan oh i love tom cruise. A anything tom cruise is good yeah uh plus it's a great looking movie too also yep. grainy another grainy movie movie yep. on my list for the guys that say i'm a grainy hitter that's the second movie that's grainy on my list <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, uh that's uh number four let's go to number three this is a new edition ever since i got the trend of uh ready player one has been making the rounds on my system as well yeah. i think that was your number two this is my number three yeah yep uh just like just like you said the the race scene at the beginning just perfect movement man like i yeah. when you mentioned king kong i the first time i saw it i rewatched it i was like is that kong running behind my my space you can hear yeah. him kind of thumping behind your head i was yeah. like oh, shit yeah. i'd never heard that before 
And uh, when I reviewed it, I think I had the uh, Integra at the time, back in 2016, 17, I had an Integra. And mm. I was like, oh, I was, I was like, I think I gave it like a seven or maybe like an eight or something for audio. But now it's right there, man. It's up in the high nines. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, great. Awesome bass. I mean, just a lot of movement in it. And then, of course, the picture quality, it goes from, like you said, you know, it could be a bit CGI looking, but they are in a video game. So I get that aspect. And then the but real the life detail. Stuff, the detail in his like tattoo and in his hair yeah. it's just great it's yeah just great. awesome awesome when they're in the yeah. cgi world yeah. and then of course when they're outside in the real world super grainy not exactly yeah. the most detailed but i'm three, I think three it's right done now on, it's not on purpose man you know yeah. it's meant to be it's meant to be depressing it's meant to be sad that's why yeah. they're in that you know that's that's why they're in that world so yeah and then you go into the uh the vr world and everything's happy and colorful everything's yeah. clean yeah. Uh, again, like like uh, Enzo said, great colors, I, super detail yeah. during the CG parts, and you know, great great highlights, explosions, peak highlights. Mm. Overall, a great looking movie. Yeah, for sure. And number two, I use this all the time as well, on all my speaker reviews. A Quiet Place. I love this movie. I could watch this all the time, all day long. Yeah. I watch it. Um, I wasn't sure how I felt about it when I first saw it, but it has grown on me exponentially yeah. in further viewings. But very, not a bombastic mix. It's not a huge action movie. A lot of subtle ambiance. It's if a very quiet film. Yeah, if, you're, if you have <laughs> revealing speakers, uh, a lot of nuance in the mix. If you have crappy speakers, you're probably not going to really appreciate it, but there's a lot of stuff going on, the environmental sounds throughout every speaker. And of yeah. course, it ramps up every time the little beasties come on screen. Also, another grainy movie as well. I'm like four for four for grainy movies. It's not that it, grainy. It's it's grainy, but it's, it's yeah, 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 yeah it's got grain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like very it. good fan boss. That overhead. I remember. I would never watched it. I actually saw your review on it, mm -hmm. and you you mentioned about you know when they're in they're under the house and they can, you can yeah. hear the monsters on top. Yeah. And I was like, I want to go. Uh, let's go watch this. So I went. We watched it in the cinema, and yeah, shat myself. <laughs> <laughs> it was that scene. I was like, Jesus. That, that is good. That is very good. Yeah, that one scene where they're playing a uh, Monopoly in the, I think the raccoon jumps on the ceiling and it's just like right yeah. in the top front left speaker. Not in the other yeah. speakers, but right in the top front left. And you hear it scurry across, right across the front, front of the top yeah. speakers there. Awesome sound. No, um, awesome. Very subtle. Very subtle. Yeah. So, if, I mean, if your speakers can do subtle that good, then it's going to just be it's even be better good. for action movies. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number two, or that was my number two. And then my That's number one movie. I watch this one all the time, even though it's kind of a crappy movie. It is. Uh, it's Midway is my number one. Right. Movie. Yeah, Midway. I mean, the, the plane scene at the beginning, just every every airplane, front to back, side to side, where right, do you okay. want to go? Yeah. And crazy amounts of bass in that movie, too. Machine guns, explosions. I mean, there's everywhere. Peak highlights, explosions again, super bright, hitting those high nits. Um, colorful movie. I don't. Is is there is there any nighttime shots? I don't. I don't. I think I usually get to like first. There's half. a couple. There's a couple just where they're walking. I think when he's walking to the um, shed or something, but very little. Yeah, yeah. very. Little. Yeah, I think there was yeah. like nighttime maybe on the ship too. Um, yeah, I, I get usually about halfway. Then I'm like, all right, this demo's over with. So let me just move on to something else. But I actually, I actually thought your number one was going to be um, that oh, the other war zombie one. For, uh, what was it called again? I always forget. Um, very similar to Midway, but it's got like monsters and zombies oh, in it. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The Nazis have been testing or yeah, something. Like, yeah, Fuck, I, forgot I can't I remember because I remember you really liked that when you reviewed it. Um, you know, the best part of it, it was right at the beginning though. Yeah, yeah, true. Every, yeah, everything else was like, I was like, yeah, it's okay. But yeah, yeah. great, man. You got Overlord is the Overlord. Overlord's movie. Thanks, is, Chris yeah. Sexton. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, I, I think, you know, again, everyone's so different so midway for me uh it was good it was just very loud it, yes there was lots of bass lots of overheads um it's not ironically it's not something i use to demo um no you no know, I, I find that it's just too much um you know too much happening great to enjoy if you're by yourself and you're watching a movie but demoing wise um yeah, yeah i've actually never used it dude i like Fair it enough. i like it on the trino i think it was like maybe the first time i've really heard that airplane kind of just from the front corner to the back corner i was like oh my god i was like that's really like uh yeah really intense like you could really hear it 
it's, it's probably like, the better the better not, out of the war movies. Yeah, it's not like you get in a like the sensation where it kind of sounds like it moves over your head, but you can really just yeah. pinpoint it, just fly right over your head. I'm like, wow. I was like, that's. I was like, I guess that's why I spent all the money for a turnoff. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, just great. Like. I think is like very pinpoint accurate, like with the airplanes. So that's why yeah. it was uh, my number one. It's a good, good uh, Atmos effects, good bass. I mean, this is like an right. audio demo. I give, I think I give it like a ten or something like that. A video, but like I said, video is really good too. Yeah. But that is my list, guys. What's on your list? Leave right. your top five list for your great for your top five demo discs that you use to show off your friends, your home theater systems. Leave them in the comments down below and let us know what your list is.